Hello again, this is Sister Sakani. This is continuation of the video of uh, the last harvest, the grape harvest. Okay, so in that first video, we talk about Micah 7, where it paints a picture of the last harvest and the, and the tribulation, the great tribulation that they're after, the people, what they're doing, and, um, you know, they're calling out to God to come and save them. Okay, and now we're going to go to Revelation 14. Revelation 14 is talking about the Lamb and the 144. So I'm just going to scroll down a little because I've already covered those. You know, the three angels, those are proclaiming or calling out uh, for the raptures. And the harvesting, the harvestings, this is where, I, I've read this, but I think I'll read it again so to understand harvesting the earth and trampling the wine press. Verse number 14. Um, I looked and there before me was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud. Take your sickle and rip. Because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So we know that this is uh, this is the uh, um, harvest of the earth is ripe. Um, it says, so he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. This is talking about the rapture of um, the wheat harvest. That's the second. That's the main one of the whole church. It says, take your sickle and reap, because the earth. Um, is ripe and he swung the sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested. So that's the first one. That's the first one. And what was the second one, I should say, of the wheat. Now, on verse number 17, he says, Another angel came out of the temple in heaven and he, he too had a sharp sickle. We talked about the sickles represent rescues or raptures. Okay. Still another angel who had charge all of the fire, came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him, who had the sharp sickle? Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. And that's another angel there with another sickle. Okay, we said the sickles represent raptures. I hope you understand this, you know, because I don't know how people can see this. It's right there. Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes for the earth's vine, from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. You know, so the angel swung his sickle on the earth and gathered its grapes. Let's stop there for a minute. The angel swung his sickle on the earth and gathered its grapes. So he swung he gathered them. So there was a gathering of the last harvest. There was a gathering of the last harvest of the grape. And in Micah, it, it says that this harvest of the grapes is in the summertime, not fall. Summertime. Okay. He gathered its grapes and then threw them into the... Uh, he gathered its grapes. We'll stop there because sometimes they... You have to read with understanding and you have to know where to stop. And then he threw them into the great one purse of God's wrath. So there's two things here happening. There's the angel has swung the sickle. We know the swinging of the sickle is the ripping of the harvest. It is a rapture. So he's gathered those who are ripe into heaven. Now there's another one that's left. We talk, in Micah it says, you know, all the clusters, all the ripe clusters are gone. That's what it says. So there's some who weren't ripe. They are left. There's no good good fruit anymore. The, the, and then those were thrown, those were not ripe, were thrown into the great wine uh, press of God's wrath. You know, God, the wrath of God, uh, I guess we'll get there. Let me not get ahead of myself. But the God is going to pour out his wrath. We know that. The wrath of God is going to be poured out when he has taken out his people. When he's taking out his children, all of them, those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, when he's taking them out, 
That's when the, the wrath of God is going to be poured out on the wicked. But still, at the last harvest, the great harvest, there will still be some who are still not ready. I mean, I don't know how much more ready you got to be because things will change, like we've said. Things will change. So, it says, Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine from the earth's vine, earth vine because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth and gathered its grapes. And some of the grapes were thrown into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city. So these are going, they were trampled into the winepress. The great tribulation or the wrath of God. I mean, it's it's where God is pouring out his, you know, his wrath outside the city. And blood flowed out of the press. Blood flowed out of the press. So blood flowed out of the press can mean some people um, who have to die to be saved. It can mean also, you know, it's a purification. God is purifying or removing iniquities. So it can be it mean two things. It can be people are dying, you know, because now you have to die for yourself to get to heaven because there's all the rescues are gone. Now to get there, you have to die. Or it can mean, you know, his, the cleansing, the trampling, the making sure that everything impure out is out of your body, out of your heart, out of your life. So, and blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horses breeders for a, a distance of 1,600 stadia. So, that's what it means. Okay? So, that's where it is there. Okay. Then I'll go to Revelation 15. It says, you know, this is the seven angels with the seven plagues. Now, the seven angels with the seven plagues, these are the angels that, 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 that are going to carry the last plagues, the wrath of God itself. It says, I saw, verse number 1, Revelation 15, 1, I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign. Seven angels with the last seven plagues. Last, it says. Again, it says, last. You know, make sure that people should be aware this is the ending of it all. The last, because with them, God's wrath is completed. Now, with these seven angels, with these seven plagues, with them, when they're poured out, God's wrath is completed. Is complete. And then it says, And I saw what looked like a sea of glass, glowing with fire, and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and its image and over the number of its name. Who are these ones who are standing on the sea of glass glowing with fire? You know, we've seen other people, other group of people. Uh, I think it was in Revelation 7. There's another group of people standing by the sea of glass. Now these are another group of people standing by the sea of glass glowing with fire. The other ones were not glowing with fire. You know. So we have to differentiate between things. We can't assume they're all meaning one. We cannot assume it's all one. Because I think that's what people are doing, is assuming this is one group. It's not. This is a different group. This is the third group. You know, because they are the ones, the grape harvest, they were harvested, they were taken to heaven. You know, so we're in heaven now. They've been rescued. They're in heaven. They're standing by the sea of glass. They're glowing with fire. During this time of the grape harvest, this is the time the Antichrist and his beast and the system is set up already. You know, it's set up already. And the mark of the beast is it's in full bloom, I'm sure. Now, where, where does it start? I don't know. It can start from when the 144 are gone, or it can start from when the wheat harvest is that can start the mark of the B system. You know, things are already in place now. We know that. The, sis the mark of the beast is already out in place. It's already out in place. People are already taking it willingly. But it's going to be a time when you're going to have to take it 
people are going to force you. He says you cannot buy or sell without the mark. Mark of the beast, microchip 666. The number of the, you know, beast. And it says those who had been victorious over the beast. So during the grape harvest, that system is already in place. So th that's why it's a very hard time. I don't know why people think that it's okay. It'll be it will be here till the end. It it's not okay. Please change your thinking, please, because when Jesus comes, you are gonna be left just because that's what you have. You're having faith for. According to your faith, it shall be done. God does not play with faith. If you do not have faith that the rapture is now, or or He is coming to rapture His bride, guess what? You are not going because you do not have faith for it. God does not want any of his children to perish. He does not. That's why some of us are continually putting out these videos, you know, hoping that people's mindset will change, hoping that eyes will open. These are difficult times. We are in the last times, last times. And also people are thinking, oh, the tribulation is seven years, you know. Revelation, it doesn't talk about seven years. You know, we have to remember those things. We cannot just hold on to the things that we were passed on from when we didn't have much understanding. You know, we have to let God reveal things to us. You know, if it was seven years, Revelation would have said seven years. Because Revelation is a book that is now. It does not talk about seven years. It talks about 42 months. But also in that 42 months, it talks about God will um, will shorten the days. But how short, we don't know. It doesn't give, give time of how short he's shortened it. So you cannot just be stuck with seven years. Things are already happening. Okay, let me com continue. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass glowing with fire and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and its image and over the number of its name. They held harps, giving them by God and sang the song of uh, God's servant Moses and the Lamb. So each harvest looks like when they get, get up there, they're singing a song, a new song only that group knows. Isn't that awesome? That's wonderful. So let me go down. I think that's it I wanted after for this one. Okay. And then, oh, you know, let me just, I guess, read it. Then you understand that God's wrath is poured out after the harvest. And then, great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. For your righteous acts have been revealed. After this I looked and I saw in heaven the temple, that is, the tabernacle of the covenant law. And it was opened. Out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues. They were dressed in clean, shining linen. And wore golden sashes around their chest. Then one of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. They were completed. And if you read 16, I think on 17, he talks about what those plagues are. You know, the souls, the boils, the souls, you know, went to those who had mark of the beast, the microchip. You know, let me see if I can show you. You know, it, verse 16, the seven bowls of God's wrath, you know, it was poured out. So the first angel poured out his, his, his staff and souls broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worship its image 
that was the first one. The second poured out his wrath and blood like uh he says the sea turned into blood like that of the dead person, and every living thing in the sea died. The third angel poured out his wrath, rivers and springs of water became blood. The fourth uh angel well that was the fourth, and the fifth angel, let's see where the fifth angel is. But that was the third. The fourth angel poured out his bow on the sun, and the sun was allowed to scorch the people with fire. They're going to be scorched with fire, you know. The sixth angel, you know, talks about the frogs coming out of the mouth of the false prophet, the beast himself, and the dragon going out to perform, you know, miracles to those. Uh, Ten kings, so that they can wage war against Jesus and his army in the great war of Armageddon. Okay, so that's what's happening, saints. That is exactly what's happening. The seven bowls, the seven wrath, the seven um, angels who pour out God's wrath, the seven plagues. Okay, so let me see if I can. Go to Amos, Amos nine. It also talks and it's also talking about the grape harvest. It's talking about the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman. Who's the reaper? The reaper is the harvester. It says when the reaper will be taken by the plowman, and the planter by the one treading grapes. Okay. New wine will drip from the mountains. New wine will drip from the mountains. Zion. This is a new Jerusalem now coming down. And flow from all the hills. And I will bring my people, Israel, back from Israel. He's going to bring them back into new Jerusalem. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them, says the Lord God. Okay, let me see. I had another one. Hosea 2, verse 9. It says, Therefore I will take away my grain when it ripens, and my new wine when it is ready, he's going to rescue, he's going to take away the grain harvest. Those are the grain harvest. When they are ripened, he's going to take them. Okay. These are good scriptures. I'm just doing a little bit, but on your own time, read all of them. I mean, they, they talk so much. There's so much there you can learn. And Zechariah 14 also, read, read it all. I mean, it talks about the Feast of Booths, you know, you know. You're talking about people. God is coming to destroy the, the people of the land. This is very at the end here. The Lord comes and reigns in New Jerusalem. He is coming to destroy those people. And he's going to gather all nations to Jerusalem to fight it. But when that happens, Jesus is going to come. And he's going to set his foot on Mount Zion. And he's going to split in half. It's going to create a biggest earthquake ever. He says there's never been an earthquake like this. This is at the second coming. Okay. And he says that then the survivors from all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go up after, year after year to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is in the fall time. Remember, I was talking to you that the fall is when Jesus is coming back. There's no rapture there. There's a, there's a Jesus is coming back in the fall. And if any of the people of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, um, they will have no rain. Okay. I got to stop here. But, you know, this this is what I was trying to show you, that in the fall there is a return of Jesus. He's going to first pour out his wrath, and then he comes the second time with the armies and destroy the, um, the devil and set up his kingdom, New Jerusalem. So I hope you get encouraged. Um, you know, we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. You know, Jesus is coming soon. He's coming now. Rapture is now. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.